there, Lindsay here, the frugal crafter on a Sunday morning, painting peacock feathers. Doesn't that sound like fun? Um, well, we're gonna work on this today, and what I did here, I did a peacock feather in regular colored pencils, so you can follow along in regular colored pencils. I just did this in my art journal last night while I was kind of being lazy and watching TV, um, and I used the quote, Beauty Without Grace is the Hook Without the Bait uh, by Emerson, and I just thought it was um, kind of a fitting quote for this, but uh, what I'm gonna do today is actually the same motif, except I'm going to use a scrap of matte board and I am going to use my ink tense watercolor pencils so let me set this out of the way and get my white paper my white on matte board there you could use um, any paper you want any you know I like matte board because I have a lot of it around because I do picture framing um, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna start off by um, just drawing the feather and I'm gonna start with kind of like a indigo color blue and I'm going to put in um, this kind of uh, shape here. It looks kind of like a molar, doesn't it? Like a molar tooth. I'm going to color it in. Um, this is number, it's uh, C blue, tw number 1200 if you're using ink tents. Um, but please use whatever you have. It's going to be pretty whether you do it in watercolor pencils, regular colored pencils, um, whatever you have. And then I'm going to go in with this um, aquamarine color, which is kind of like a light turquoise. And I'm going to draw um, kind of like a squarish oval around that and fill that in. Now if you're using regular colored pencils, please pay attention to your strokes. You'll want your strokes to all go um, in like very linear. Um, think of every, you know, every little stroke being like a little one of those little furry um, flangey things on the feather. So just that's the only that's the only thing if you're doing um, regular pencils that you're not going to blend with water, you want to make sure that you keep your, the strokes in mind. Then um, I'm going in with kind of like a tan. This color is mustard, 1700 if you're using ink tents, but it's basically a tan and I'm going to draw kind of, think of it like an egg with a yolk and the yolk is that blue area, that's kind of what we're what we're doing here. So this is what I mean about the strokes, if you're using a regular colored pencil, color it in like that, okay, because you want the quality of this lines to be, um, you know, to be represented there. If you're using watercolor pencils, it doesn't matter because you're going to be adding some water to that. Now I want to add a little bit of interest to that, so I'm going in with a darker brown. This is Willow 1900, which is kind of like a sepia color, or sepia, tomato tomato, and I'm just going to add a little bit of that around the edges. And if you're using regular colored pencils, again, you may want to uh, pull out the metallics. That might be kind of fun. Um, now I want kind of like a, um, a bluish green. This is a teal, teal green, and I'm going to go around that circle with my teal green and then I'm actually going to do another one of these circles up a little bit further leaving a little gap to fill in with some other colors but since I have this out I'd rather just kinda use this use it right now and then I'm gonna start building my uh, I'll fill it in a little bit there on the bottom I'm gonna start building my stem I'm just gonna let it kinda go off the edge. You can swoop it, you can bend it if you're trying to fit in a, in a specific shape. So please um, go ahead and do that if you want to. I'm going to go back in with a tan um, and fill it in here. So I'd use some metallic pencils here and you might be able to see it if I tip it to the light, but it's really kind of underwhelming, but it is kind of like a fun way to play with those if, you, if you're using those. I brought my um, polychromos pencils upstairs last night to work with while I was watching some uh, on Netflix, I found the show Doc Martin, and I caught a few shows on a few episodes of that on PBS, and I really liked it. I just I love quaint villages. I love like little small towns and quaint villages, so I found that uh, show very charming. I like that a lot. Um, it's something about aloof British <laughs> actors, I guess. I don't know. Um, I'm going in with some of this uh, dark aquamarine. I'm gonna trace the stem. Oh, I'm gonna show you a really really fun technique with a fan brush in a few minutes too. I'm going to throw in some of the little feathery bits. Feathery bits, I don't know what they're called. You know what I mean though. Speaking of feathery bits, my chickens were all on the porch this morning. It's rainy. They're uh, not very happy with their lot in life right now. Outside in the rain. And I'm just, you know, keep. this is what I mean about the lines. Keep your lines um, you know, keep the quality of the line, even if you're using watercolor pencils here, because you might not blend out all of this. You want to make sure that, that it looks good. Be really expressive. This is a, this is a really fun, uh, fun part. Sorry about the furnace in the background. Uh, many of you said that you don't mind, 
um, everyone was going to come awake upstairs. I'm up, I was the first one up, but I just didn't have the energy. I've been so tired this week. I was beginning to think somebody had switched my coffee to decaf, which would be a very dirty trick considering the kids are on vacation this week. But I don't know. I think maybe I just had a little touch of the cold or something. Uh, all right, I'm adding a little purple. This is uh, actually mauve number 740 in the ink tense line, but really use whatever you have, use whatever color pencils you have, use, um, I mean, even Crayolas. I, I don't think you're gonna, this is such a fun project. As long as you get the expressive lines in there, it's gonna look good. I actually am already liking it better in the ink tense than in my regular color pencils. And I love that you can kind of um, amp it up a little bit. You can add colors that really aren't there. As long as you stick with these, um, as long as you stick with the basics, as long as you stay in these color families, you're gonna be fine. Okay, and I feel like I need a little bit more of that dark blue, which um, was deep indigo. I wanna make sure that's what, oh, I didn't even put any of that in yet. I want a little of that deep indigo in my, um, the center. Maybe a little bit in the stem. And a little bit just to, to pump things up a little bit. I don't need to go too crazy with the uh, little flanges there because I know I'm going to add some more work with that. Let me just see if there's anything that I haven't used yet that I wanted to. Sometimes I usually tend to grab out a couple more pencils than I actually end up using um, because I like to usually keep keep with less. I think less is more. I want to make sure I have a little bit of the sea blue in here and make sure I have plenty of that. Oh, did I put any of that light green in there? This is um, a very pretty green. It's called Spring Green number 1550. I just felt feel like I need a little bit of something to freshen it up a little bit. Okay, and these colors are so vivid and pure that I think they're gonna look really great when we add the water. All right, so, um, and I wanna offer a tip here because you know how I always buy my, how I always recommend these brushes with the acrylic candles? Because I get distracted and somebody interrupts me and I accidentally leave my, wa my brushes in the water. Well, that happened with this one. You could see, this is a wooden handled one and you can see where the paint is cracked. Um, that's why I use the acrylics. Uh, the acrylic candled brushes predominantly because I do have a tendency for that to happen. I don't wanna add too much water so I am using a smaller brush. This is a number um, two round. I'm just gonna go in and liquefy these colors. My hands are shaking a bit today. I had uh, probably too much coffee this morning. So what I'm doing is just kind of skipping around a little bit because I don't want all my colors to run together. A little splashiness is nice, but I don't want too much. I like the colors mixing and mingling a little bit. Oh, I just love it. I love when I see my colors start to start to react there. The nice thing about the matte board is the color is not going to run too much. Um, you really can't, you know, I wouldn't be able to go in there and lift and, and uh, pl mess with it too much, but this is something where I want to retain the quality of the line, so that's all right. So I'm just kind of um, moving my brush in these linear strokes up and down so that I kind of keep the same quality of the line. Now this is fun. I just did a tiny little practice. This is the first time I've done this, but I think it's it's uh, it's great. This is an oil painter's fan brush, and you're probably wondering, well, what's the difference between oil painting brushes and watercolor brushes? Um, typically, like if you're going to use a thick paint, you need uh, brushes that have a stiffer uh, bristle to them. These are hog bristles. Um, it's a byproduct of the meat industry, which you know I'm not. I don't know. It's um, I usually don't get animal brushes but I've had these for years they do last a very long time and you know since I do buy meat for my family to eat I figure it's using the whole animal I don't know you know you can't be perfect right um, so what I'm gonna do here is I've wet the brush and they are very stiff bristle bristles so what they're going to do is it's gonna help me carry the color so look at this gorgeousness look at that versus that it just makes the color come alive isn't that pretty and how easy is that I'm just gonna flick up a few um oh i love it um and then really neat thing about this is that um i see you know you know me and i'm like very very frugal and i don't like to sharpen my pencils too much because i don't like to waste the lead so this helps me get those fine lines and i can keep my bristles 
kind of blunt. So really that's all there is to it to paint this um, peacock feather. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a great time um, doing this. I just want to show you the difference between watercolor and colored pencils one more time. So there we go. We have our uh, we have our watercolor version, watercolor pencils, we have a regular colored pencils, looks great either way. I do hope you try it, and if you want to share your creations, go to the Facebook page, the link is below the video, and uh, you can share your artwork there, and I'd love to see it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting. Oh, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye-bye.